Dan Omen, Mike Beer, race number 12 at Pimlico on Black Eyed Susan Friday is the $100,000 Jim McKay Turf Sprint. We're going five furlongs on the lawn. You can bet this race and the nice card with a DRF Bets account. Deposit $100, bet with $250. With DRF Bets, it's as easy as ready, set, bet. Let's meet this field of fleet sprinters getting set to go five-eighths of a mile on the turf in the Jim McKay. The horse they're all going to have to beat is the number three, Bound for Nowhere. This horse is a graded stakes winner going five and a half at Keeneland. This horse has run very well overseas. And last time out in the Shaker Town, he looked like a sure winner at the eighth mm. pole, only to be run down by Imprimis, who very slowly is creeping into the upper echelon of, of turf sprinters. Yeah, it's, it's true, and there's no Imprimis back in this race. Um, so we'll see where that horse turns up next time. But this horse, you know, I feel like you could look at that race and go, wow, what excuse did he have not to win there? I mean, he opened up a clear lead in the stretch. Imprimis had a real tough trip in that race, and he still ran uh, bound for nowhere down. But I, I don't know, Dan, I thought this horse ran really well last time. Um, he's basically run really well in all of his races. And at the end of the day, I don't know if you agree with this or not, this race that didn't come up that tough. If he runs his best race, he's supposed to be really hard to beat here. His main competition on paper is the salty number eight pure sensation who's banked $1.5 million in his career and returned off a lengthy layoff to win his eight-year-old debut at Gulfstream. All things considered, that was a good performance. He has yeah. speed, but I don't think he necessarily needs the lead to win, and I think he'll be shadowing bound for nowhere yeah. and trying to engage that horse at the quarter pole and say, let's race. I mean, he seems clearly to be the main danger to that horse I don't you know maybe he's lost a step he's not quite the same horse he used to be but you know he clearly has the races to to make bound for nowhere really work for this thing if he shows up his seasonal debut was fine he got to the lead in there he turned away a little bit of pressure and he held on at the end he didn't look 100% to me in that race. He takes a step forward here. He could be tough. Let's see what Time Form US has to say from a pace projector standpoint. They expect it to be a fast pace. They expect the three bound for nowhere to be close. A little surprised they have pure sensation far back. A little surprised the completed pass. The number nine is the speed of the speed. And I guess of the local hopes, this one is the best of the local hope, finishing ahead of four of these common rivals in the King Leatherberry on April the 20th. Now, this was this horse's turf debut. Yeah. He ran very, very well up on a solid Solid, solid pace. They yeah, went 21, nice. 42, and 4. They almost broke a long losing streak on turf for this barn. Yeah, it's true. You know, he really did run a good race last time. I mean, I, I'm sort of in the position where I want to see him do it again. Um, but that was a fast pace, and he did have to rush into it early. Um, and he was the horse that survived it late. Then it got closed down at the end by Dirty, who got a perfect trip from off the pace. Source ran really well, and if he runs that race back, I suppose he's a contender. Anyway. The seven oldies but goodies projected to be part of that solid pace. Really has done nothing wrong on the turf, beaten by the aforementioned Dirty, who was not a bad turf sprinter in the Mid-Atlantic region in the turf debut. Then most recently on the lawn, way back in September, sat just off the pace, came with a solid run, didn't look like a 10 to 1 shot that day, yeah. has also done some good things on dirt, but we've got to deal with a lengthy layoff right. and two horses in the three and the nine, and the eight even, that are just sharper than he is. Right. First time off a layoff, catching a field with plenty of speed, and, and it's you know it's just a better field than the one um, that he beat last September. That was yielding turf. He just got a really nice trip, sort of sitting up there tracking the horse that wound up being second to him. And they didn't go that fast. They're going to go a lot faster in here. Could you find the excuse for the two tricks to do last time out? It comes out of that completed pass race. And yes, there was a hot pace and completed pass was still around. Tricks to do sat behind that pace, trying to come with the run finished evenly. I, I didn't see the excuse for him. I know he had a far outside post, but that was actually a terrific ride from Daniel Centeno. I don't know how he did it, but he got forward and angled right over into the rail and sat a perfect trip in that race. When it came down to the you know last eighth of a mile, this horse just didn't have enough. A big fan of the one American Sailors, won 10 of 36 lifetime. He's seven years old. When you put him in the right spots, he yeah. usually fires a good shots. He was the one that was dueled into the ground by completed pass in that race at Laurel last time out. Again, he's a very likable horse. He was also claimed for $7,500 yeah. back in June of 2018. And I've never really thought of him at this point in his career yeah. as a stakes horse. I mean, I don't have anything to add to that. He's rock solid. These races seem like they're a little tough for him. He didn't run poorly last time. I mean, it's not like he totally collapsed off that fast pace. He only got beat a couple lengths. Tempt Me Twice comes into this race off a of victory sprinting on the turf at Laurel. But in that race, he was able to just completely control the pace up front, facing no pressure early, and then kept right on going. That's not going to happen here, according to Timeform US. 
who has him last yeah. after the first quarter mile. It'll be a lot tougher for him here, and he, does, he doesn't have a race that makes a contender in here. New York's finest, another horse coming out of that completed pass race. Uh, like Tricks to Do, had an outside post that day. He was chasing, and I thought all things considered, it was his first start off with a mm -hmm. long layoff. He didn't pack it in as badly as yeah. I thought he was going to when they turned into the stretch. I think this horse can improve second start of the form cycle, but again, the question is, how good is he? He's yep. always been a nice New York bred, yep. and I wonder if, again, there, Linda Rice is looking for races at Saratoga. He likes it there. He really does like it there. You know, considering he was off the layoff last time and chasing a really fast pace, he didn't run that poorly. He did get tired at the end, um, but he had a reason to. I guess the real question with him is, do you think he can make the lead in here? Because all of his good races are when he makes the lead, and he may not be able to get there. There are some spot. graded stakes caliber turf sprinters in here with that kind of speed. Maybe he will not be able to make the lead in here. Clever Triad is the six. Another horse going second off the layoff, coming out of the King T Leatherberry. Didn't need to be at his sharpest in that yeah. race. He was also 81 to 1. Yeah, he was a huge price in there. Um, you know, they sort of ran away from early. His, overall, the trip was fine for him, and he did race on at the end. It's not like he embarrassed himself. I thought second off the layoff, you might see this horse take a little bit of a step forward. Is he good enough to beat this field? Probably not. He's a horse I want to use somewhere at a big price, though. Three for three on firm turf last year. I think he was headed the right way. Maybe he, fucking, maybe he can get a piece of this race. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Jim McKay turf sprint. And we're going to go with Bound for Nowhere in here. I mean, listen, he's the favorite. He's way the horse to beat. And we just think he's going to dissuade pure sensation and get it going. Uh, maybe Wesley Ward had him fully cranked last time out for the Shaker maybe. Town. But as you said, this really didn't come up the strongest edition of the Jim McKay Turf Sprint. It just looks like it's a nice race for Bound for Nowhere. You're going 3, 8, 9, and 6. I'm going 3, 9, 8, and 2 in the $100,000 Jim McKay Turf Sprint. Again, play it with a DRF Bets account. Nice card at Pimlico on Friday, and there's a race called the Preakness on Saturday. Get involved. Deposit $100. Bet with 250. Bets.drf.com. Approximate post time for the Jim McKay Turf Sprint. 525 Eastern. Good luck.